Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey and New York Times bestselling author uh, John Gilstrap here. Gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. In, in this and little, Eagle in this, School Road was better than I was expecting. Yeah, it's it's well, I mean, it has been three days. When you cut, go out past the Dollar you know, General, I mean, though, come on, and it's, that S curve that coming S-curve, through, yeah, that's th- there's ice there all the in, time in June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a runoff thing that's, yeah. that's happening there, and, in, it, and it's like, whoosh, June. like that's the only like multiple times my truck slides are like get a little get a little loose in the back end, and I'm like, whoa, where'd that come from? So we haven't had school since what monday and we're supposed to get another two to four into tomorrow i don't think we'll have school tomorrow either colin agrees with me he's already shaking and said no keep those bird feeders full school no what's that got the, to do with school it doesn't but but well at your home you can watch the birds but oh, you got to okay. feed the birds because they can't get to the food because we got the snow then there's the squ- gonna be more the on squirrels top are stealing all the food out of the bird feeders anyway man you know what well we, don't throw corn out either for deer during the winter we put it, it's a, a kind of bird food you can put oh. in the feeder that is hot pepper and birds birds like hot pepper well they don't mind it but squirrels hate it oh so they stay away <laughs> so yeah so colin reminded me there was no school monday because it was the king holiday so no school all week i guess Right. Via telephone, Delegate Wayne Clark, or Wayne Hardy, as I like to call him every now and then. Wayne, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, I feel bad for John Hardy because you insulted him really, really bad. <laughs> you, and, you and Hardy are buddies, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, Wayne, who's your roomie uh, down there? I can't remember. I do not have one. Oh, I that's now why have I, my own office. That's why I can't remember who your roommate is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I now have my own office. We're down in uh, room 151, the Economic Development and Tourism Wing. Well, you're a busy man in the state of West Virginia with economic development and tourism. Yes, I am very busy, uh, and I love it. So uh, we have talked in the past about some things that could help make West Virginia a bit more tourism friendly. And I know you've got some bills you've been moving along that may have a chance this year to get some traction. What do you have for me? Well, I have I have two. I have uh, a POTA, which is a public outdoor designated area. Uh, it affects municipalities um, and allows for uh, municipalities and fairs and festivals, the uh, bars and the mis- municipalities and fairs and festivals, to dual operate at the same time. So when we have, you know, something downtown Martinsburg, downtown Charlestown, um, people can in that area can consume and walk and you know, have a festival. So uh, that one, uh, just uh, a bill that was introduced last year with some cleanup for it this year. But the big one is the farm winery bill. Uh, That is something that has been in the works for quite some time. Uh, Myself and my attorney uh, for economic development and tourism, Max, have been working on uh, finalizing this, taking information from Virginia and their code and and matching it up with our code and our state constitution, um, working with the uh, Ag Department, with the AG's office, with ABCA. So it's been a big, big, big lift, and we're hoping to receive a number on the bill today um, in some form or fashion, but everything on the bill is done sponsors have been added everything is ready to go and ready to hit the floor refresh our memories on what is in the farm winery bill so what we're doing is we're setting up four classifications um, of and the classifications are based off of volume of wine I don't know what um, fermented annually or bottled annually, and um, what these each of those do uh, has different requirements in regards to fruit that they purchase, what they grow, um, <clears throat> things like that. But what's great about it is we get rid of some of these antiquated issues that we've had in the past, uh, such as. You know, in some situations, you can go to a farm winery and you can have a sample. But the thing is, you can't, the farm winery can't charge you for like a sampling. So they have to eat the cost of that bottle, let you have a sample. Then you can buy the bottle, but you can't consume it on their property. You actually have to leave and take it home or take it somewhere else and and consume it. 
so uh, we clean up that. So now you can have a sample if you want to have a bottle. Go out, put a picnic blanket down, sit down, uh, listen to a band or music that they have going on, um, and enjoy the bottle there. Uh, the other issue is that if these farm wineries go to a festival, all right, um, they can't give you a sample. They can sell you a bottle, but they can't give you a sample. So this bill cleans that up. So not only can you have a sample from them, you can buy the bottle from them, and then you can go anywhere in that fair and consume it. Now, one of the crazy things is, is that if you're a farm winery from Maryland and you come into West Virginia, you can actually give a sample, they can buy the bottle, and they can sit anywhere in the facility and drink it because the West Virginia laws don't restrict the Maryland farm wineries. It's just absolutely crazy that our farm wineries had to go through this over the last forever years you know um i don't know anybody want to take a guess how many farm wineries are in west virginia well i know there's twelve thousand in loudon county virginia 10 <laughs> i'm gonna say 10 10 close 17 that's it in, in the, the whole state? state in the whole state <clears throat> yeah well because right. how could you stay in business under these yeah. rules it's tough it's tough so virginia has 274 pennsylvania 376 ohio 323 Maryland, 77. We have 17. Hmm. So is this the farm winery bill likely to pass? Is there yes. resistance to it? Yes. So during during some caucuses and um, some early whip, whip counts, uh, we're, you know, we know we're going to have a, a few people that are, you know, consistently against alcohol bills that are going to vote no on both sides of the aisle um, between us and Senate. But uh, overall, we've with it, and um, we don't see any reason why it doesn't go through. Um, my friends over at the uh, Senate are waiting for it uh, to get through the House so that they can uh, move it along on that side, too. I, I, are, the, are the people who are, who are going to vote against it generally people who are against government getting involved in people's lives, Wayne? Uh, no, I more of your your um, uh, Bible Belt areas, you know, uh, more religious based that are against just alcohol bills overall. Interesting. Okay, good, uh, Matt. I, what what's the farmers' uh, position on this? They are loving it um, because you know the what's awesome is we're now giving our local farmers who have been for years, um, you know, farming and, and, you know, it's time to retire, whatever. They have an avenue they can, because now they can lease their part of their land, all their land to these farm wineries to come in and create, you know, a beautiful opportunity, uh, economic driven op opportunity and, you know, either have the lease or the or the buyout, and the, off they go. Or a golf hole, someone. Well, yeah, take... or they come over to the golf course and they golf every day. Mm -hmm. Now, will this affect the the um, distilleries and breweries as well? Uh, no, no. See, that's um, each of those are different sections of the code. So um, this is just farm wineries. Does that need to? Is that necessary that they're in different parts of the code, or they're and they're treated differently, or should a uh, a winery and a distillery be treated equally? In my opinion, they should be treated equally. But keep in mind that we're, you know, we're still a constitutional state in regards to prohibition because of um, and ABCA is is you know always had a extra restrictions um i have spoken to folks because i've had received calls in regards to what's this going to do for our distilleries and that's going to be our next year project so you know right after session is done um max and myself are going to start getting on the distillery tour and going around and finding out what all their issues is, are and what we have to fix on that so that'll be the next project do you need staff for the distillery <laughs> tour <laughs> I'm, I'm ready <laughs> willing to volunteer all right wayne as i understand it beer 
in West Virginia is illegal. So in order to make it legal, you have to refer to it as being a non-alcoholic beverage. A non-intoxicating beverage. Non-intoxicating beverage. So so in and of itself, that would make beer illegal in the entire state. Correct. If you can get drunk from it. Correct. And this is one of those emperor has no clothes kind of thing where we've just kind of all gone along with this for so many, like, what is it, 80 years or whatever? Well, yeah, about 80. Well, I, yeah. So, yeah, so we, when, when, we had, when we adopted our Constitution from Virginia, you know, we were still under the prohibition. Um, and that's been in there ever since. And is this uh, one? Is this a, this is step by step to try to modernize this, the approach Correct. toward alcohol in the state of West Virginia? How long will this take, do you think? Well, uh, if you recall, um, in 2021, House Bill 2025, which brought us – so anything that we had that we uh, lessened the restrictions on uh, during COVID for our bars um, and restaurants, we brought in House Bill 2025, which codified those. You know, that's where you got your outdoor picnicking – you know, your outdoor uh, tables where you could sit out front – of the restaurant and and consume uh have eat and have alcohol out front so um though that was the first one now the farm winery then we're going to look at the distilleries uh next as i understand it the while we have independent liquor stores the liquor stores have to buy their liquor from the state is that right correct how much does the go ahead no, you got to ask your question. How much does the state make off of the liquor sales to liquor stores? Do we know? Five uh, percent. So that comes to millions of dollars. I'm going to guess. Uh, roughly, ABCA's annual revenue in is between thirty-six to forty-six million. Wow, and that's five percent. Wow, that's. Yeah, you yeah, sell it to the state, then the state sells it back to you, mm-hmm. right? Correct, correct. So if I if I make a bottle of wine, I sell it to the state. The state then sells it back to me, and then I can sell sell it to either a customer or I can sell it to, you know, uh, a, a liquor store or whatever. All right. Now each time that sale happens, there has to be a max, a minimum of ten percent upcharge each time. And then when it gets to the liquor store, then the liquor store ha- sells it to the customer. So you you could have essentially four taxes through that process before you get to the customer. So when somebody opens a winery and you bring people in and it's a beautiful day and they, they sit outside and drink the wine that is made at the winery, where is uh, the there's a step then with the state that's missing, right? Because they're making their own, do they have to sell their own stuff that they make to the state and then buy it back? Correct. So they can sell it to the state, (laughs) buy it back, and then sell it to the customer. With with 10% markups along the way. Correct. Minimum. Does anybody else do it this way, or is this a West Virginia thing? Just a West Virginia thing. Okay. So, uh, Wayne, a- along the way, I- I'm obviously, if you grew up here, you know about it. If you've just moved to the state, uh, you-, you kind of find out about it along the way. And that has to do with going to uh, restaurants and such where you have to hit the buzzer on the front to, b- to be allowed to go in. And uh, obviously, this is tied to some of those old rules and laws as well, dealing with alcohol and whatever. Would some of these rules make that buzzer no longer a thing that you need to have on your front door to get into an establishment? So most places that have the buzzer is because they have video lottery machines that are not in a closed off room. So if you walk into a place that has visible from the front entrance video lottery machines, that's where the buzzer comes in. But I've been to places in the past that didn't have video lottery machines in, in, at all in the establishment and still had the buzzers. Is it, I so think they maybe call, them, call themselves a, a, a private club, and then there was—I mm-hmm. don't know if that if there was some legal advantage to doing so. Yeah, I mean you're just you're just controlling from that, you know. But uh, 
No, the the buzzing in and out. If you have exposed video lotteries machines, mm-hmm. um, you know that's going to continue. Um, you know, other than that, uh, you know, you're looking at. You know, you could be a full private club. You know, now all of our all of our ABCA license set. You know, say private something like you know I'm a the golf course is a uh, private golf course club. So you have to you have to hit the buzzer on each hole to get your ball yeah, back. Yeah, you got to buzz each yeah, hole. Each hole to get. Right. Hey, no. uh, as a person who's on economic development and involved in recruiting businesses like LG, like you did on your trip to South Korea. Uh, on uh, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan, sorry, Wayne. Uh, we had uh, a couple of candidates on recently who both uh, running for office on the Republican side, critical of giving money to other companies to come to West Virginia uh, when uh, they feel like that is an, uh, an improper use of taxpayer dollars. Can you address the use of taxpayer dollars to bring corporations to West Virginia? So, yes. Keep in mind that... We're not always just giving the the company money, all right? Sometimes we have to widen roads. Sometimes we have to reinforce bridges. Sometimes we have to get water and sewer to the property. Sometimes, you know, so all of these things go into those packages. This is what we are going to do to get a site ready for you, have everything accessible for you so that you can come in and hit the ground running. Now... Yes, it, it, it's a game, I guess you could say. Every state is doing it. Every state is offering different types of incentives, tax incentives, whatever, to bring these companies in because there's always some return on investment, whether it's payroll tax, whether it's you know um, property tax or something. So you know, if you always look, you'll see we don't get rid of all the taxes for all of it. You know, we might give them a, a, a tax break on their property tax, but we know they have a thousand employees coming in. We're going to collect off of the <clears throat> employment tax on that. So, you know, there's there there are parts of it that when you look at it and you see a hundred million dollars, oh my God, yeah, but fifty million of it is just infrastructure, water, sewer, and roads. The other fifty is is used for uh, additional site site build or something, so it's not always we're just giving you this extra money. Erica Kalenich is a libertarian candidate for governor, and, and, and granted, the Libertarian Party hasn't exactly been a serious threat to win major elections in this country or or in this state. Nevertheless, said that if the state just took a more business friendly approach, for instance reducing or eliminating completely, I should say, state income taxes, inventory taxes, B&O taxes, all, all, I know those are more local, uh, all, all the taxes that uh, businesses are saddled with, you would need to put together these incentive plans to come to the state. You could just simply present yourself as a very business-friendly state, and you wouldn't need to give money to these corporations to come into West Virginia. Would that work, Wayne, do you think? We are already a very, very business-friendly state. Uh, since since the Republicans <clears throat> have taken <clears throat> over the majority, we have gotten we have slowly crept up that list of this is where we want to look. Uh, the state of West Virginia is where we want to look. You know, so we're already business-friendly. So um, to to say if we just got rid of all this, people would come. All right, all right. Yes, it was in a movie, and I think Kevin Costner said it because it was in a movie. You know, if if you build it, they will come. All right. Well, it's not going to happen because they're when they when a company looks where they want to go, they're looking in a geographic circle of a proximity to their customers, ports, rail, all that stuff. Well. We have competition on all around us for that types of property. So there is there is always something, you know. Well, Maryland offered us this, or or Virginia offered us this. You know, if we say, oh no, we're not going to offer you anything. It, you just want to come here. They're going to go where they're getting 
some sort of a break, some sort of a, a, a tax credit or, or, or something. I, I get it. You want to get rid of all the taxes overall and there's none against a business? Well, who's going to fund the state? You can have a sales tax of 20%, uh, not that high, maybe 10 or 12% that you're going to have a sales tax, and that's going to hurt everybody because that's the only way you're going to collect revenue uh, to run the state. Wayne, when you're out there on these marketing pitches try to bring people in, do you get pushback? The fact that our education system is so abysmal, does that come back to, to haunt us? So we do get a little bit of a pushback, but that, but one of the things is, is that we, uh, uh, we passed – two years ago, um, which is a CTE, uh, Career Technical Education Training Program, that if a business comes in, we will contract with the local um, CTE to help train their employees as they want them trained. So they would start working maybe at, a, at an entry level or an apprentice level at the business They'll go to the CTE, and the CTE will, will train them. You know, we'll even bring in their equipment into the school to train them on how to operate it. So, you know, when we get that question, we follow back up with this, you know, we're going to try and train your, your employees, help you train your employees. I initially saw when LG was being mentioned about coming to West Virginia, that Jefferson County was on the short list. Do you have any insight into why that didn't work out? So um, we're still on the short list, but there is a long phase process with this uh, in regards to, so the first two phases, which is just their, their, their innovation and um, uh, the AI aspect, uh, the, the telehealth aspect, which is coming first. When they expand, when they start to expand, you know, we are on that list. Hopefully, we're seeing something in Shepherd University that I would love it. Uh, but in a manufacturing part, we could see something potentially come to the Eastern Panhandle. It's a good hint. Hey, uh, Wayne, uh, I'm down to just a couple of seconds here. I'm going to get into the discussion about uh, teacher pay raises and such. I saw a big article on that this morning on the Metro News website. But the final thought is yours going into the 9 o'clock break here. Well, I'm, again, I'm excited to be down here um, helping 99th District, Eastern Panhandle, uh, the state of West Virginia with economic development, tourism. Um, anybody coming down, please let me know. I'm in a new office. Come down, check me out, uh, you know do a little tour uh, of the Capitol, but uh, my new office is 151R. It's on the first floor of the Rotunda. So um, be safe back home. I know that I'm not coming home this weekend because I know this. we're getting like four or five inches here. So mm -hmm. to my family, I'm going to miss you again. So thank you. Hey, isn't 151 an alcohol, Wayne? Bacardi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's following you around everywhere, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> have, have, That's the hot stuff. Have a good day. Hey, Siri, call Rob Mario. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked last time. It's, my phone's calling you right now. Yeah, there you are. There you are. There's, there's Wayne calling me right now. Siri is a good assistant. He really listens to you there. Have a good day, right. man. And Thanks. Is, and is always listening to you. Delegate Wayne Clark there. And remember, uh, also, Alexa, make sure you turn on WRNR, Alexa. Everybody's got one on in their house right now.